Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the January 17th, 2024 um, hearing of the Quincy Planning Board. Just going to open the public meeting um, and go over some ground rules. So, pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Um, the board requests that you please be courteous to the proceedings and turn off your cell phones. The planning board reserves the right to administer oaths through the chair, summon witnesses, call for the production of papers, um, cross-examine any person giving testimony, um, declare recess, limit debate, inspect um, the site or buildings during reasonable hours, and adjourn the hearing. The order of business will be announced by the chair. All questions will be directed to the chair. Any person wishing to speak, please raise your hand and wait for recognition from the chair. When recognized, please stand, state your name and address, um, your specific interests in the proceedings, any special credentials you may have um, pertaining to the presentation. Please speak slowly and within the context of the hearing matter. The hearing is being um, taped for the public record. We reserve the right to exclude any unnecessary, irrelevant, repetitive, or harassing presentations. So with that, I'll um, take a roll call. Ali Shaughnessy, present. John Kelly, present. Um, Kim Beelan, present. Larry Luzo, present. PJ Foley, present. Thank you. And with that, I'll um, recognize Jim Fatsy, the planning director. Thank you very much. Uh, with the chair's permission, I'd like to share the mayors, the planning board, and the planning uh, department's thanks to retiring uh, Vice Chairman Greg Galvin. Uh, in March of 2019, Greg Galvin was appointed by Mayor Cope to serve as a member of the planning board. And uh, before the year's end, he accepted the nomination to his role as Vice Chairman. All told, during his tenure, Mr. Galvin o has overseen the review of 77 planning board cases, 47 special permit site plan reviews, five certificates of consistency, three definitive subdivisions, two transit-oriented development overlays, one planned unit development, as well as providing recommendations to the city council for nearly a dozen council orders. It's also no, uh, worth noting that uh, this was Greg's second round on the planning board. He served in the 1980s as well. And uh, with his long and distinguished career as a land use attorney, uh, Vice Chairman Galvin's expertise has been an invaluable asset the board, to the board on a vast variety of projects with broad array of land use considerations. I just want to send a big thank you out to Greg Galvin for his service to the city. And as we all know, it's the citizen board members that make this proper, you know, a proper board and uh, gives us a chance for the citizens to be represented. Uh, and thank you very much for your time and your patience. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And we certainly um, on the board echo those sentiments as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the first order of business here is to vote on the minutes of the December 13th uh, planning board meeting. Motion to approve. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Then opposed. That's good. The first public hearing is 10 Independence Avenue planning board case number 2024-01. This public hearing shall be conducted to review the application of Anton Sela 9 School Street Quincy, Massachusetts for site plan review under Quincy Zoning Ordinance Title 17, Section 9.5.1, Site Plan Review, and Special Permit under Section 5.1.17, Parking Waiver. The applicant proposes the replacement of the existing auto body shop with a four-story, nine-unit condominium building with a commercial space on the first floor and 23 parking spaces. The proposal will also include structured exterior space and amenity space for the residents along with professionally designed drainage controls and landscaping. The property contains 10,973 square feet of land and is located at 10 Independence Avenue. The subject property is located within a Business A zoning district and shown on Assessor's Map 3033, Lots 33A. Same anybody here? Attorney Fulton. Um, good evening, Ms. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Patrick Foley. 
and I'm the attorney for the project here tonight. I'm joined here tonight by Alita Alba from Chu and Associates, who's our architect, as well as Chi Man, who's our engineer for the project. Um, I want to preface um, our presentation by just saying we've been unable to have a neighborhood meeting for this project. Um, we actually have it tomorrow night. The reason for that is with the new council being sworn in last week, getting letters out to everybody logistically, it just wasn't possible to get it done before tonight. Um, so we'll have that meeting tomorrow night, and you know, between myself and the counselors, everything that goes on at that meeting, comments, suggestions, etc., uh, we'll forward that all over to the board, the planning department as well. Um, and as for our presentation, uh, 10 Independence Ave is located in the Business A Zoning District. Um, right now, at 10,973 square feet, is uh, an auto body shop, Quinty uh, Auto Tech. Um, as you all know, uh, this corridor from Franklin Street all the way down into Independence Ave um, by the birthplace over the last 18 months has seen a much needed facelift. Um, this facelift has also been like an extension of Quincy Center. I know 9 Franklin Street, there's been a, a mixed use development there. 106, uh, 108 Franklin Street has had a mixed use development down there as well. As well as the Dunkin' Donuts across the street. Um, I know Delaney's Pub is at a facelift also um, into a sub and sandwich shop. So this proposal um, will follow that mold of a mixed use development. Um, what we're proposing here tonight is a uh, four story, nine unit, one commercial spot, uh, mixed use development. Um, the commercial spot will be on the first floor. It will be roughly 1,200 square feet. Um, there will also be 23 parking spots um, with this proposal as well. Above the commercial spot will be three stories of residential. Um, there'll be nine units total, um, two bed, two baths, um, and now I'll have a leader and uh, she can come up and walk through the site plan of the project. Good evening. Uh, for the record, my name is Chi Man Bahadi, Man Group, um, 1285 Washington Street, Weymouth, Massachusetts. Um, as uh, attorney, um, Foley, Made introduction. This is just uh, if we go to the layout plan. Thank you. Um, the existing site is the other body shop, um, basically uh, at the corner of the uh, intersection Franklin Street and Independence Street. Um, the entire site, on the existing condition, is uh, building and pavement. So, um, with the proposed project, we are going to have. Um, uh, four-story building, uh, partially of the site will be open parking, and some of the parking will be under the building. Um, and then, you know, rest of the um, traffic islands or parking uh, area will, will be landscaping. So there actually going to be a, a net gain of green space on the site, uh, rather than you know, zero percent, you know, green space for the existing conditions. So as far as uh, site drainage go, you know, runoff is going to be reduced because we are introducing green space in the site. And furthermore, if you go to the next page as well, um, we'll be taking all the roof runoff from the from from the building and go into an underground uh, drainage system. It's going to be provide some sort of retentions. Uh, this is a Caltech system, uh, the HDPE arch uh, module. Uh, chamber that will taking all the roof runoff. Uh, we grade the site such that we have a rich line between where the building interface with the um, uh, open parking. So the open parking area will drain into an open catch basin. Actually, we are having a uh, water quality unit, uh, storm sector for the PI, which can provide uh, water quality, 80% uh, TSS removal. So uh, there will be uh, enhanced the uh, runoff before it's going to the uh, infiltration system. And the roof runoff will be considered clean water. It will all go in into the um, infiltration system that will be stored on site for infiltrations. And when the system is full, we have a connection to the uh, storm drain system on Franklin Street. And the cover parking area, uh, we grade it to a catch basin that um, 
that will be collapsed and go through a, a gas or water separator because the, um, those are more concentrated um, contaminants. So have to, uh, by coal, we have to treat it and that will be discharged through the sanitary sewer system. Um, the site uh, is well de uh, developed site right now, so we have all the existing utility, water main, um, gas, and, and um, electric tele telecom is all available to the site. Um, we have a transformer space that is tucked into the back of the site right now, um, just a placeholder for now, uh, until we talk to the power company, and then we, we don't know if, if that's going to be a post-mount transformer, then it won't be necessary, we'll have more green space. Um, we have the sanitary connections, gas connections, and um, you know, we'll run underground um, electric and uh, telecom to the site to the new buildings. Um, other than that, um, if there's any questions? I have a question for you. Um, if you go back to that slide there, so are you identifying that as a transformer at the bottom of the, of the? Yes. So when you're drawing, you're identifying it as a dog park or what, what it's? Well, am I looking at the wrong thing here? Or? I think that's the architectural site plan. Oh, okay. Um, when we do the site engineering, we need a uh, placeholder for a transformer if we need one. So we, we, we pick that spot for the uh, transformer. So it's, it's going to be a dog park or a transformer park? <laughs> Whatever left from the transformer would be the dog park. <laughs> so it's going to be a dog park and a transformer yes. park? So the dogs can get right next to the and transformer? And hopefully if we have a post-mount <laughs> transformer, then that will be entirely a dog park. Okay. Um, I have another question, if you don't mind. On, in, on the Franklin Street side, is that is that an entrance to the to the basement area, or are those two parking spaces? Um, See, on the on the on the right hand side, there you have two spaces. There are those parking spaces. That's two parking spaces. So be designated. So they're they're like, uh, going to be they're going to be backing out and pulling out to, yes. like to Franklin Street from there, as yes. opposed to. So that's going to be, you got to be pretty talented to go out yeah. back and well, forth. Well, those will be designated place for like employees or, or, or maintenance person for okay. the building. So people that know the site will be, will be parking for open parking like okay. visitor or, and such. Thank you. You're welcome. Can we, yeah. can, we um, can you clarify, is that the parking lot for Shop and Save? Uh, because it does look like the shop and save is beyond the deck. The, it's on the, the back side parking. of the transformer. Yes. So that 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 parking has nothing to do with shop and save because uh, it's no. a little confusing yeah, the, by looking the at the drawing. Yeah, the parking actually have a jock around. So. Okay, so that. Okay, so that's strictly where the, the garage is right now. So basically, the parking is going to be where the garage is. Yes. The building is going to be where the open space is yes. currently. Okay. Well, you, if you can, it's dark on the on, on the on the background, but you can see the existing building kind of have a jock in the back. Yeah. Property line follow that. Okay. And then, will you be planning on doing any EV with these, or any and, and electric vehicle charging stations for any of the parking, or any anything um, along that line, too? We'll, we'll be looking looking into that. Yes, further discussion with the owner. Okay. <coughs> Good. Thank you. Sorry. A couple oh, other okay. questions. Oh. But go ahead, Larry. What is the uh, bedroom breakdown? I know it's nine unit condo condominiums, but what's the bedroom breakdown for each unit? Do we know that? Two bedroom bathrooms. Two bedroom bathrooms. For all nine. Yeah, two bedroom bathrooms. Okay. Okay. And I know that you know the public. You're having a public meeting with the community tomorrow, so. I mean, we'll take that into consideration. So everything we hear tonight will be changed, I'm sure, uh, at the next meeting. But um, zoning, you have a meeting coming up? Uh, we have a, we're going to be moving on with our planning. Okay. We have a February date, but we're, we're going to push that up. Sure. And I'm sure the Historical Commission will get involved at yeah. some point due, yeah. due to the, okay. I mean, I imagine, um, you know, by the time we get to the plan, we will probably be in zoning by April. Okay. Yeah. 
No, the project, I mean, the project is, yeah, I think, a little too big for the spot right now. Um, certainly, I appreciate what you're trying to do here. Um, I look forward to seeing some future versions of the project uh, coming before the board after you uh, get, get through with the meetings with the community and all that. So, but, uh, that's all I have for now. Thank you. Thank you. Number Shaughnessy, did you have another question? I, I, it goes back to what we were just asking about the, the parking lot and the liquor store. So. I'm a little bit confused. So where the transformer and the dog park are, I'm assuming that you cut that in there like that because that's where your line goes for your property, yes, that's right? The property line. So, and the delineation between you and the parking lot for the liquor store, your property line, is that gonna be, that's gonna be uh, all landscaped and fenced or we're, how's that? It's so, going to be landscaped. We have a new landscape buffer between the- um, between, between the parking lot and your, and the, like a store area. Yes, um, it's, it's a, a, a kind of thin strip right between. We go back to the uh, layout. Right. The green area is going to be the new green space. Yeah. Area. The parking and the next uh, floor They will separate it from the parking lot for the. Uh, right. liquor store. <clears throat> One last question. I, I'm just looking at the green space and that's uh, not a lot of green space. Well, what do you got, two feet? I, well, Maybe? We would have to say it's a tight site. Um, 18 uh, inches? Uh, well, they'll be sharing that with the dog park. <laughs> no, I'm looking at the where the parking spots are and the, where the little feet, shrubs also, are. Roughly about three feet. Three feet? Five feet? Are you talking the dog park or are you talking from the parking spot to the property line? It's five feet? Okay. My scale rule was off. They will have a curb and then the landscape. All right, thank you. Okay. I just have a, a couple questions. Um, trash, I think I see an enclosure. Is that right? Is that a trash area with the yes. door? Okay. Um, so no dumpster on site, just pe folks would bring, no, or is that a dumpster? There's a small dumpster here, and then the site would be behind it. Okay. I thought she did right Yeah. Yeah. I think Alan just does she want to present? Well, he has other questions. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Oh. Engineering Sorry. question. Engineering question. Yeah. Qu yeah. So so um, and then just want snow removal. Um, snow storage, is there a designated well, space? Well, no storage will be the green area, and then, you know, any excessive snow, we are going to have a private contractor to take it off the site. Okay. It's like any other urban properties. And then just movement through the site, it's just one way? It's so one way in from Independent Ave and one way out to uh, Franklin Ave. Okay, and is there going to be signage along Franklin Street? Yes, it's going to be stop sign. Um, and do not end the sign on the other side. Okay. So it's wide enough for two-way traffic, but I think it's better for one way. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. And, uh, and I think we need to go through that. Yes. yes. Thank you. with Chuan Company Architects, One Buildings Road, Quincy. Could you could you pull the microphone closer to you so they can hear up back there? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So this project consists of a four-story mixed-use building with commercial space on the first floor and three-story um, above with nine um, residential units, three per floor for a total of nine units. Uh, the building is located at the front corner of Independence Ave and Franklin Street. And as you can see, the parking is towards um, the rear of the property. There are 23 <coughs> parking spaces and um, two of the spaces you can see, uh, you have to access them from Franklin Street, and those are gonna be spaces designated to the commercial space, um, to the employer for that space. Next slide, please. So here we have the basement plan. The basement is gonna be solely used just for storage for the residential units. Every unit will get a storage uh, room in the basement. Also will be used for the um, uh, mechanical sprinkler room and electrical room and also the machine room for the elevator. Next slide, please. 
No, next. I think you went backwards. Okay. Um, here we have the typical floor plan. All the floors are identical. Um, each floor, um, second floor, third floor, and fourth floor are, uh, they have the same layout. Um, they contain three units. All units are two bedrooms, two bathrooms, and the square footage varies from 1,285 square feet to 1,374 square feet per each unit. Um, next slide, please. Here we have the elevations, front elevation and one of the sides. It's gonna clear in a minute. Um, the building uh, features a, um, a very traditional a residential look with red brick, uh, double hang windows, uh, Juliet balconies, and also a uh, mansard style roof with dormers. Next slide, please. Um, these are the other two elevations for the building. Next slide. Here we have a rendering. Uh, the first um, rendering shows the intersection of Independence Ave and Franklin Street, looking directly at uh, the facade of the building. Um, next to the right, we have like a bird's eye view. Um, as you can see, Franklin Street and um, Independence Ave uh, below. Uh, the other four slides, four uh, images, are um, renderings on all sides of the building. Next. And this is just like a close-up um, views of the facade of the building. <coughs> Any questions? Yeah. Member yeah. Shams. So it, it looks like it's a brick building. Yes. So is it going to be a wood structure behind it, or are you going to use cinder Correct. blocks? Excuse no, it's going to be wood structure with wood structure a, uh, and then four inch brick veneer. Real brick, but it's real just brick. one row. Yeah, real, real brick. brick. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Member How are you doing? Um, exterior lighting, are you just the only lighting going to be the cast iron uh, posts, or are you going to have other exterior lighting out there on the building? When we prepare the construction <coughs> documents, I think we're going to look at more closely to the lighting. Um, I believe that I think some lighting on the building, especially on the back of the building, is necessary for the parking too, so we'll have some um, wall lighting. Okay. Because right now you currently have no lighting on the back, right? It's just coming yeah, we'll, down the sidewalk. Right. No, we will have lighting on the uh, back side of the building. Okay, thank you. I'm just going to briefly, quickly jump on that. In, in terms of lighting, I know that in terms of a revised plan, it would be helpful for this board yeah, so to see actually, the, yeah. the lighting so that when we decide kind of at the construction phase, but that we would be able to see where the, the yeah, lighting is. Yeah, we're actually going to have a professional design the photometric lighting for the whole site. Okay. Because that was requested actually from the planning board. So okay. next time we'll have that. Great. Um, Member Leos, any Good. other questions? Just sure. One, one construction point. You, you mentioned it, it's wood. Is it yes. all wood or is it all the podium uh, in the back? Is it all well, the with four stories, you don't need to have a podium. Okay. That's what I was just asking. Yeah, because you, know, you can have type yeah. uh, 3A construction, okay. which yeah. is all, Thank yeah. You. So, <clears throat> I have another question. Here. Sure. So, on the handicap spot, it looks as though you have one handicap spot. Is that correct? Actually, it's two. The one that you can see on the right side, on the back side. That's a van handicap spot, and then the other one can be regular. They can share the uh, AC. So, the, so yeah. you have the handicap symbol, and then yeah. you have a handicap van yeah. spot. So that's so, that's considered right. two spots then? So this one will be the van, and yeah. then this one, uh, it's like a regular handicap spot. They can share the. Right. Yeah. So it's it's side by side handicap spots, is yes. that what you're saying? Yes. It's allowed that they can share that um, eight feet long. And for your commercial use down on your first floor. Any ideas what that might be at this point? You know, what kind of, no, no, no interest no yet? No. no idea yet. I mean, I don't know what the code is or what is the requirement for handicaps for, for commercial it's, space. If you have uh, 15 spaces or more, you're required to have one. Okay. And 25 or more, then you need to. Thank you. So. <laughs> um, I do have um, just a few questions. So this is contemplated as a condominium unit for sale project. Yes. Will that include the sale of parking spaces? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, we have to discuss it with the uh, um, owner of the project, and okay. next time we'll come back with an answer yeah. to that. Okay. That would be good to know. Um, well, we have 23 spaces, so if we 
use two spaces per unit, that's 18. So I'm assuming that was going to be assigned to each unit, like two spaces to each unit, and then the five extras will be for the commercial. For the commercial. That's my okay. guess, though. Okay. Um, the two parking spaces that enter onto Franklin Street, just yeah. looking at those at once we saw your renderings, mm -hmm. are those in a garage? No, it's just like no. a wall going around the building. They're open so that people can back out to okay. the street. All right. And it's not going to be like in and out all the time because Special. those will be assigned to the commercial unit. So the people that work there will use it like once in the morning and then when they go home. <clears throat> okay. Um, and then I did have a question about the floor plan. So yep. um, I think it's shown as unit 203. I assume it's the same going up. But there's an office space. Yes, one of the units has an office space. Area. Yeah. So. I would just say my concern That's would, the biggest unit. Yeah, would, yeah. would be that that could easily be transformed into a bedroom space um, because it has a, a locked or a separate door. Um, I know it doesn't have a closet, mm -hmm. um, but maybe having a cased opening on that would yeah. be, I think, okay. probably yeah. cause less concern for me if I'm reviewing that, okay. um, that that could be converted into okay. a bedroom because that. obviously that impacts yeah. parking and, and everything yeah. else. Okay. Okay, you can change that. Um, I think that that was all I have right now for questions. I have a question that might be directed more towards Rob. Does this, do they have to have, this is going to be a condominium, so is there any percentage for affordable housing? And how do you do that here? The, the city's inclusionary zoning ordinance is 10 or more units. So this is at nine, so it does right not on. trigger the uh, local ISO. Okay, thank you. You want? That's Sorry. You Finish with your presentation. I just want to add one yeah. more thing. Uh, we're currently working on the traffic report. Um, as soon as we have that done, we'll form that over with everyone up there. Okay. Yeah. All right, Rob, do you have any questions? No. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we will open this for um, to public comment. If anybody wants to come up, please. Sure. Um, I'd also just note while she makes her way up, there um, are sign in sheets on the sides. So if you don't feel comfortable coming up and you want to sign in, say for or against, um, certainly feel free to sign in as well. Yeah. Thank you. you. Yep. My name is Cindy Brandy. I live at 52 Independence okay. Avenue. Um, so I am extremely familiar with this site and I can see it's ugly as sin now. Um, my concern with this proposal is it's about two stories too high and about five feet too close on the sidewalks to Franklin and Independence Avenue. I've noticed in my many walks lots of buildings like the ones at McGrath and Washington Street, they've got setbacks. If you look at Clifford in place, they don't have, they have like a covered place for tables outside, but so as you're walking down the sidewalk, you're not brushing the exterior of the building. My concern is that this is looming. As we're walking through the neighborhood, it becomes a feel more like an industrial as opposed to a residential. I realize this, this is a commercial space, and again, it's ugly as sin now. So I'm not opposed to, you know, let's keep it green. It's not green. I get that. Um, but this is too close. It's too, it's too massive for the, for the neighborhood. It's four stories. There's nothing that's four stories. And it's right butts of, up against the sidewalk. I have concerns about snow removal because what, where would they put it? Oh, I'm sorry, you can't park in your assigned spot because I have to put snow there. That's, you know, right now they do a, a horrible job of shoveling the sidewalks. Um, and my concern is there'd be no place to put the snow. Um, I'm open to development. I think there's way too little green space. I mean, what's there is an eyesore and this would compound it by making it even more massive of an eyesore. So. I look forward to seeing future versions that might be slightly or significantly smaller in scale. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else from the public wishing to speak on this application? Yep. Yeah. And Dan B, I also live nearby. I actually could, have a could you just identify your address? Um, 143 Phipps. Thank you. Um, so we have nearby in the neighborhood on Water Street, we have a former um, auto shop um, place. And I think one of the reasons that there hasn't been building there besides some of the sizes they've talked about is cleanup. 
So this is currently an auto body shop. So my question is, will there be plans to check environmentally um, if things have to be done before this gets built? Good question. When we receive applications, we yep. do distribute them to a number of city departments. Okay. And the combination of uh, the fire department, uh, inspectional services, as well as the health department uh, will comment if there's any existing contamination. So uh, through the review, we haven't got those reports yet. You know, the planning department will have a dialogue with those city agencies and the applicant. Um, you know, they may be forthcoming with their own environmental um, remediation that is already either occurred or is underway. Um, actually, right behind you, Pat, you seem like you might have a little yeah, piece um, to it. I can check with the applicant, but when you buy the swap, you have to do an environmental before you buy it. So I can double check for him to make sure that that was done. Uh, but I know most, most lenders do require it before they, they lend you on it. Right. But Absent, yeah, absent that, the city departments, with what we know, will review this site as well. Right. And I just want to uh, second what Cindy said about how close it is. Again, okay with putting something else there, but right now the nice thing about it is that it is so set back. And we, I think of it as sight lines as you go around corners, and that's a five intersection. So. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Would anyone? Yes. Sorry. I put an email. Hello, my name is uh, Richard Sweeney. Uh, I own the funeral home at One Independence Avenue with my sons. I did write a letter. I, I assume that you got it, and most of my concerns are in there. But I had a question um, by right. Uh, how many condominiums can a person put on a 11,000 square foot property? Is there a set amount? <coughs> Um, we haven't done the, that check yet, uh, okay. Mr. Sweeney. Um, I think minimum lot size, um, you, you know, for multifamily, it, I believe is, uh, let me see. Well, that's okay. I was just trying to figure out how many condos you could have on a space like this. Uh, the four-story uh, height is a, a big concern to me. I think it's too much of a project for that small amount of area. Uh, I'm concerned about no setbacks. Also, uh, in the Franklin Street area, the car that leads to uh, the back of Quincy Center, uh, there's currently two projects being uh, developed. Uh, residential, one has a component of uh, commercial in the front, but they're all in the conforming uh, three-story limit, and uh, that's my, one of my big concerns. The other is the parking in this so-called commercial space. Whatever commercial space you have, you definitely need parking, and there is no parking. Uh, if you were to take a, a ride through Independence Avenue uh, during business hours from Monday to Friday, all those streets in front of all the parking spaces, there's only two in front of the funeral home, but there's a couple down the street as you go uh, toward Goddard Street. Um, they're always filled up. Uh, people use our parking lot all the time to go to McKay's, um, and it, it just uh, is a problem. It's been, parking has been a problem uh, for many years in that area. The other thing I don't hear about is um, the effect that this building would have in the historical area. We have John Adams and John Quincy Adams birthplaces right in the middle of that intersection. Uh, it is a gateway to the city. And uh, Franklin Street and Independence Avenue have come down. Uh, a four-story building with no setbacks uh, poses a major problem for uh, sight uh, when you're driving in there. That is a very busy intersection. And like most intersections in the city, people speed through the yellow and they go through the right red light see it all the time i'm surprised there's not more accidents there but i think that a building of this side is going to cut that uh, sight line down so that uh, those are some of my major concerns okay. thank, you. thank you thank you thank you would anyone else like to speak on this matter i'll have a quick comment yes. forgot my tripod oh Okay. Um, well, we do have uh, Mr. Crosby from QATV taping this for the first night tonight, so it might mean that 
my watch might be open. So. <laughs> Say it's not so, John. So, Say it's not so. I, I mean, I'm not sure if I, yeah, I, I can still be back here to speak, okay, but will I ever record another planning meeting? I don't know. But I'm going to dedicate this meeting to, you know, I, I still miss Chairman Mead, so I'm dedicating right now to Mr. Richard Mead because no one who's watching a planning meeting right now for the first time ever got an opportunity. But like I was telling Mark, I'm going to stop putting oldie but goodie old <laughs> things on QATV. I'm still going to hold them in the archive for another couple of years until this big plan that we got goes together. But anyway, looking at this thing, okay, um, I agree John, with... John, just identify your, your name and your address John for Burfield, the record. John 62 Grand Thank Wall you. Road. Um, and um, when I was looking at this picture, you know, one thing... I'm thinking like the people at McKay's are going to be looking out the window, kind of staring on this. One of these things I've been experimenting with is um, solar power recently. We had that massive outage um, a couple weeks ago. My parents didn't have solar, I didn't have power for about 60 hours. And so, you know, now I have these EcoFlow solar generators and I got solar panels and I'm just trying to figure out everything. So something like this blocks the light out. I mean, I don't understand. We already know that the commercial businesses on there are strained for parking places. Um, I know that when I drove up to when the old city councilor who lives in that area, um, Councilor Andronico, I tried to park near his house. It's like impossible to park up there. There's just literally, there's no parking on any of the side streets. So one of the things um, I agree with the, um, the developer here, this is a good place for a development. I mean, that new zoning that we just made is 10,000 square feet. We're talking about putting 30 units in. So he's only looking to do nine units in a 10,000 square feet. I don't think that's dense at all. I think we could use some beautiful luxury apartments, some nice condos to get some great people to move to Quincy to really have their stake where they live in the city. But if they live here, do you really want to live? right on the street and hear the cars coming. So my idea is, you know, take this building, bring it back here, you know, and, and get rid of the commercial. There, there's old people who, and handicapped people, um, ADA um, accessible apartments that are needed for the first floor. Um, an ADA person would love to live on the first floor back there, let the sun come in, let people walk down the sidewalk, like this lady said over here. You could, you could maybe even get 12 units in there. You know what I'm saying? Get rid of that thing. We want to make beautiful places for people to live. You said you don't really have anyone to have that commercial space, so if that is in fact the truth, no one's missing out if we get rid of the commercial thing. The commercial thing, who knows how many people would be there. And, and what you were saying about that office, maybe that could be another business that could bring a lot of people in there. I'm, I'm really not concerned with it being another apartment. When I heard that it was going to be an office up there, I'm thinking that maybe that could be a place where there's going to be a meeting before some rally that they might hold on a sad day in Quincy Center. <laughs> so, um, you know, you can do a better job. You're going to have the neighborhood meeting tomorrow. Um, you have a good, another good city councilor. I mean, Ward too. Talk about great city councilors: Councilor Ramondi, Councilor Kroll, Councilor Andronico, Councilor Ash. So I mean, that we got a great ward. So let's keep the people happy and let's build something where we can get 12 good people here. Because who knows what kind of business is going to be there? You don't know. I mean, could you imagine if that was a um, um, a Dunkin' Donuts, you know, or a Starbucks. I mean, although we do have that Dunkin' Donuts on Franklin, we kind of just fix the problems on that street. So we don't want to mess it up. And then, like they said, there's all, there's, there's all other things that this project has which they need help on. They're going to need help at zoning. Um, what Mrs. Sweeney was saying, I'm not sure off the top of my head, but I'm thinking they really only have the right to do three, four, or five. You know what I mean? That's what the rule is. It's business A, so business A would go to res B, you know, and res B, I don't, I can't think off the top of my head. I'm seeing like 3750, you know, per dwelling unit. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right. Um, but the bottom line is that um, the way we're redoing zoning, this is right near the train station. We just opened that thing so people can walk there. So like I said, great place to, to make condos, really nice condos. This is one place too where if you do build condos there, I'll come back to the developer if they build cheap condos there. I want really nice condos. I want two bedroom condos with 
two bathrooms that have real good size square footage. We don't need, you know, we've got enough 400, 450, 600, you know, one bedroom apartments. We need some beautiful apartments where people can come and raise a family and be happy, you know. And then, you know, just another weird side note because I have so many ideas. Um, I would like to see, we, I've come to so many meetings, as much as I love animals, I love cats, okay? Um, it's, it's not one cat park we made anywhere in Quincy. It's all about the dogs and stuff and whatever, okay? But the reality is, is this, we haven't had one place where it's, you know, what about people who are allergic to animals that can't stand dogs and can't stand cats? Because there are those people out there, okay? And for peace, you know, so maybe they're, you know, like, I wouldn't want dog poop on the corners there, just put it that way, okay? And, you know, they can do a better job redesigning this, okay? But I'm in, I'm in favor of, a, of a, um, a dense development like this. I don't think it's dense. I think they could even be denser if they were to remove the commercial. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, sir. Hi, uh, my name is Rob Marcioni. I'm across the street at uh, 11 Independence Ave Marcioni Insurance Agency. So I've been looking at that lot out our front windows for 40 something years. Um, I, my concerns are mostly with um, the parking in that area and my firm is the one who causes the problems with the parking. I've got uh, 12 employees mm -hmm. Right now, only five of them are in the office because they're all demanding to work remote since COVID. Um, and so there's five cars out there parked on Independence Ave. I'm usually the last one in because I'm the old man in the group and um, I'm circling the block looking for a parking space. So I think if there's commercial space as well as visitors, um, that's really gonna put a stress on the parking in that neighborhood. The other thing that, um, that happens in that lot, the way it's set up now, is people cut through from Franklin Street over to Independence. They go right through his driveway all day long. I see people going for, or from Independence over to Franklin. So that's gonna even exacerbate the park, um, the, the traffic problems, because you know with that building there, obviously nobody's gonna be be cutting through, but a lot of people take that shortcut right through his parking lot, and the the current owner doesn't seem to get upset or anything, you know. So, so that's um, that's a problem. I think the size of the building is also uh, an issue. The four stories, um, that's our morning sunlight coming through um, <laughs> right across the street into into our building, and it's uh, it's kind of nice on a sunny day. Um, that'll certainly eliminate any of that any of that light coming through. Um, so those, those are my concerns. I kind of echoing what, what uh, Dick Sweeney said. Um, same kind of concerns with, with just the size of it and, um, and the parking. I, I don't know that 23 spaces for nine units is proper. And, and if there's no parking for the commercial, I don't know where those vehicles are gonna go. But it's, it's, it's tough already and I, I can't imagine it um, getting any tougher. And I'm all for development. Um, put put up a, a beautiful building with condos, but just something that's size appropriate with, with proper parking for that neighborhood. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? No. Going once, going twice. You obviously heard it will be um, continued. Um, was there any public correspondence? <clears throat> yes. Yeah, um, so uh, Chair Beeland, through you to the board. Um, uh, myself, uh, Rob Stevens, Deputy Planning Director, received a communication from Superintendent Marianne Peak from the Adams National Historic Park uh, this afternoon. I don't see Marianne here tonight. Um, so, uh, to Mr. Fatsy's City of Quincy Planning Board, uh, regarding Planning Board Case Number 2024-01. I represent the National Park Service as superintendent of the Adams National Historic Park located in Quincy, Massachusetts, uh, regarding the proposed development project at 10 Independence Ave in Quincy. To put this request in perspective, I consider this a major development project that needs attention to move forward, but not without further consideration of appropriateness. 
I was informed about this meeting last week by a neighbor, active business uh, invested in the historic district, a district so named for the National Historic Landmark and National Park, the Adams Birthplaces at 133 and 141 Adams Street. Um, at no time uh, did Adams National Historical Park receive any inquiry or correspondence relating to this development project to be dutifully prepared. To learn more, I reached out to Jim Fatsies of the Planning Board. I am grateful for the local businessman who informed me of the meeting. I look forward to examining the proposal and plans submitted to the Planning Board and in the future, if appropriate, the Zoning Board. Until further examination and in the meantime, I do not support the plans being brought forward at this Planning Board meeting on January 17th for several reasons to be defined after review and consideration of all parties involved in the options available. Uh, the National Park Service is responsible for the preservation, conservation, and protection of these historic properties and cultural landscapes, the birthplaces in uh, parentheses. Uh, we are committing federal funds to restore the cultural landscape in preparation for the city's 400th anniversary in 2025 and the nation's commemoration America 250 that will bring thousands of visitors to Quincy acknowledging and commemorating these events, including the semi quin Centennial in 2026. These events being planned to verse a calendar starting in 2025 and beyond with John and Abigail Adams' contributions to this critical time in our country's history and the creation of the Massachusetts Constitution written at the Quincy, John Quincy Adams birthplace. We anticipate an increase in visitor use, educational programs, and local community involvement at these NHL properties. Impacts of traffic, parking, and accommodation of new buildouts to date that continue to attract vehicle traffic and congestion will also impact uh, potential safety issues. I bring this to your attention because I know events being planned by the city and NPS will impact traffic safety and further development as we look for creative ways to minimize impacts and maximize accessibility. NPS has a transportation system in place supported to move visitors throughout the city that contribute to the mobility of tourists and visitors. But in addition, we've invested in acquisition of two trolley vehicles to minimize traffic congestion since the sites have limited parking surrounded the boundary of the houses. The street parking is, at, is inadequate as it stands as it is also shared with other properties and businesses such as McKay's Restaurant. Since we have no jurisdiction for the city-owned roadways and traffic, we welcome an opportunity to examine along with the city and future development projects how improvements surrounding the birthplaces and traversing around a complex traffic pattern to accommodate increased pedestrian mobility, traffic movement, and pedestrian and vehicular safety. As NPS is examining options for minimizing impacts, more uh, of more visitation and parking, we would consider that the city plans are for traffic flow and the possibility of expanding the sidewalks surrounding the birthplaces. We will pursue options with the city. The question is how will the condo development project impact these concerns introducing, introducing potentially nine condos, four stories with a question mark? Uh, parking on site, parking and possibly retail activities, question mark. And do retail activities and build out support zoning, question mark. What provisions will guarantee green space? Again, another question mark. My immediate concerns relate to traffic congestion, structural uh, design within a historic district, safety for a vehicle, and even more important, pedestrian traffic. How appropriate is retail space for this project? Um, is it necessary and what is or was a neighborhood supported by existing retail? Um, On-site parking for retail clientele and residents, all good questions impacting activities surrounding the property. Most visitors arrive at the birthplaces asking, where is the farm? When they see how the sites have been encroached upon rather than protected by open space, development in the surrounding area makes NHL birthplaces invisible. To my knowledge, there's been no ward meetings of the neighborhood to share the plans, no meetings with newly appointed city councilors for the wards involved. Um, understandable since they were just sworn in. No communication directly with the neighborhood residents that I know of since I have not received notice. We will now be welcoming new counselors to the responsibility of their respective wards. I understand there's a meeting scheduled for January 18th. I plan to attend. Um, I look forward to meeting and working together for preservation and protection of historical properties within the so designated and critically important historic district commission. 
I understand a zoning board meeting has been scheduled to address these development project requests that may be premature. First, I suggest the developer and his council arrange to meet publicly with the city uh, ward councilor. Um, Leads, Mr. Daniel, uh, Mr. Daniel Minton, Ward 5, and Mr. Ash, Ward 2, as well as Councilor at Large, Scott Campbell. Uh, meet with the neighbors who are invested in the city of Quincy and our property owners, residents in the district, introducing them to the project if they haven't already done so. Uh, meet with the National Park Service. Such, such meetings are a courtesy and helpful in planning forward. Go back to the drawing board for appropriateness and then present at the planning board before zoning. I'm not certain, but I believe there are several concerns that the proposed plan does not meet zoning requirements. Uh, this must change before approval. We understand this is a property with development potential. How smart growth and development is considered will influence future development of surrounding properties, not only this one. Look forward to future opportunities to learn more relating to this proposal before we can support it. Thank you for the opportunity to express my concerns relating to the 10 Independence Avenue. Marion Peake, Superintendent of the Adams National Park. Thank you. Um, we'll obviously print this out and you can uh, have a chance to read it yourself. Okay. okay. Um, and we have additional correspondence. Um, the first is an email from James Edwards, president of the Quincy Historical Society, sent to Jim Fatsies on Wednesday, January 17th. Mr. Fatsies, Mr. Stevens, I understand there is a planning board meeting this evening and that one of the agenda items concerns a project proposed for 10 Independence Avenue. Based upon my review of the proposal as posted on the planning board's website, I have concerns about a number of issues. Mm -hmm. The parking design appears to create difficulties with vehicles accessing or leaving the site. The parking spaces immediately adjacent to an intersection are particularly problematic. Has TPAL reviewed this parking layout? The building design itself appears very busy with a variety of building elements in a historical style completely foreign to the neighborhood. The overall appearance, while perhaps appropriate elsewhere, seems jarring in context with the surrounding neighborhood, and particularly with relationship to the critically important Adams Historic Site Buildings diagonally across the street. Also appears that the project requires seven different zoning various variances. That seems to be a lot of relief for this project to proceed. As the project is, of course, within the Adams Birthplace Historic District, very careful and extraordinary consideration should attend the review of this development. It is my belief that the 10 Independence Avenue project should not be approved as submitted. Respectfully submitted, James Edwards. Um, there's also um, an email from Sue Palmer. To the Quincy Planning Board, I live at 70 Federal Ave, not far from the proposed project at 10 Independence Ave. I have reviewed the applicant's plans and application and wish to express my concerns regarding this proposal. Please add these comments to the record of the Planning Board hearing scheduled for January 17, 2024, as I will be unable to attend. My very first opinion is that the building is too high to fit the neighborhood. The plans do not make this apparent. I always find it interesting that developers always show the building standing all by itself it's lonesome without any existing structures near it. Dropped on a blank slate, amazing. There are other houses and commercial buildings in the immediate area, not half as high as this project proposes to be. It will literally stick out like a sore thumb. All other structures will be dwarfed. I will be able to see it from my pantry window all the way over on Federal Ave. This is not acceptable. A two-story structure would be more appropriate for this neighborhood. As to the design, at least it is not as ugly as most of the apartment buildings being constructed all over the city. After reviewing the application, I must also take exception to the applicant's response to section 1.4, quote, the location and significance of any historic structures, unquote. The applicant answered, quote, none. Maybe not on the direct site, but right across the intersection is a national park called the Adams Birthplaces. I think they are kind of, quote, historic. Also, currently the zoning for the site is business A. If you construct dwellings in a business A zone, won't you have to rezone the site? Doesn't that require a hearing before the zoning board? Has this been done? If not, is it going to be done? Also, parking. 23 spots may seem <coughs> adequate for nine condo units, two and a half spaces for each, but considering how expensive those units will probably be, it will take more than two and a half paychecks <coughs> to afford the monthly costs. And the more people need to pay the expenses, the more cars there will be since no one can depend on public transportation anymore. Then they will be parking all over the street like they do now on Federal Ave and all over the city. This is a disaster waiting to happen, but you can prevent it by limiting the number of stories and units. And by the way, the first floor is intended for commercial use. 
Where are those pe people going to park? In the liquor store parking lot, in Sweeney's parking lot, on the street? I hope my concerns will be taken into account when you make your decisions regarding this project. Thank you, Sue Palmer. And finally, there was a letter um, dated January 12, 2024 from Richard Sweeney, Jr. Dear Mr. Fatsies, this letter is regarding the above reference proposal for the development of 10 Independence Avenue, Quincy. I am proud to be the principal owner and operator of this funeral home together with my sons, Francis M. Sweeney and Richard T. Sweeney III, fourth generation funeral directors. The funeral home was founded in 1949 by my late uncle and my father, Francis M. Sweeney and Richard T. Sweeney, both World War II veterans from this great city of Quincy. For 75 years, we have served our friends, families, and this community during their time of need. I personally personally have been involved in this family funeral business at this location for over 50 years. There are serious concerns that I have about this new proposal for 10 Independence Avenue. This is a dynamic historical neighborhood located at the crossroads of two important gateway entrances to the city of Quincy, Franklin Street and Independence Avenue. In addition, this extremely busy intersection serves as a corridor to the southern access to downtown Quincy Center. There have been recent developments and ongoing projects that serve to offer a better window of accessibility to Quincy Center. We should seek to accomplish similar improvements at this intersection. This applicant is seeking several variances to build a four-story, nine-unit condominium with no setbacks, limited parking, and commercial retail space on 10,973 square feet of land. I object to this proposal as is too dense, too large, and inappropriate for this historical neighborhood. Among my many concerns are the parking, traffic issues, and safety as five streets intersect, and the lines of sight from Independence Avenue and Franklin Street will be affected by a four-story building. The shadow effect of a four-story building and the lack of adequate parking needs to be considered as well. Parking has been an ongoing challenge for, challenge for businesses in this area for many years. This development stands to exacerbate those problems if there is insufficient parking. The birthplaces of John Adams and John Quincy Adams under the stewardship of the National Park Service are recognized as historic landmarks and generate thousands of visitors to Quincy each year. The appearance and character of our historic neighborhood, intersection, and corridor are vital in projecting Quincy as a first-class city as it will complement the many major upgrades and improvements in downtown Quincy. We should also recognize and consider the surrounding residents and their right to live in a neighborhood which is not overdeveloped and not conforming to the comfort and feel of residential living in Quincy. Although this new project will be a definite upgrade from the existing auto repair shop, approving a four-story building in this historic area would set the wrong precedent for future development. I believe this proposal should be revised to adhere to the current zoning regulations. Sincerely, Richard T. Sweeney, Jr. That was all the correspondence. On that. Right. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, department has sent this out to, de um, to the interdepartment review. We've also uh, solicited uh, the services of an independent engineering peer review on this. None of the responses have arrived yet. So the department's recommendation would be to continue this matter two months to the March 20th meeting to allow for the neighborhood meetings and the technical reviews to occur. Are you available? Is Harry Foley, March 20th? Okay. Is there a motion to continue this matter to March 20th? <coughs> so moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, so Member Kelly and Member Shaughnessy, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Great. Thank you. All right, so the next item on the agenda is 62 and 68 Albertina Street Planning Board Case Number 2024-2. This public hearing shall be conducted to review the application of Albertina Assets, LLC, 136 Gay Street, Westwood, Massachusetts, for site plan review under Quincy Zoning Ordinance, Title 17, Section 9.5.1, site plan review, and special permit under Sections 5.1.17, parking waiver. The applicant proposes the construction of four new duplex-style townhouses consisting of eight residential units and 16 parking spaces. The proposal will also include professional design drainage controls and landscaping. The properties contain 18,450 square feet of land and are located at 62 to 66 Albertina Street. The subject properties are located within residential B zoning district and shown on assessor's map 
3,100 lots 15, plot 17 a map, 3,100 lots 30, plot 18. Hello, Attorney Fleming. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, members of the board, uh, for the record, my name is Edward Fleming. I'm here on behalf of uh, Cindy Zhu and David Lee, who are the managers of Albertina Assets LLC, the owners of the properties at 62 and 66 Albertina Street in West Quincy. Um, at, if, if many of you are not familiar with the, with the community, or certainly with uh, Branch and Albertina, Albertina and Branch are, consist primarily of, of single and two family houses uh, throughout the neighborhood. Uh, Albertina actually ends, uh, dead ends, um, as well as Branch, kind of at the entrance of Crown Colony. Um, it was essentially dead ended, I think, when Crown Colony was built out. Uh, at the end of Albertina, there are some uh, townhouse style uh, developments, or condominium developments at the end of that street, as well as the singles and two families that that's, are scattered throughout the neighborhood. Um, the properties that we're dealing with together are about 18,540 18, square feet, and they're located within a residence B zoning district. Although they're very close to the new zoning district, overlay zoning district that was included um, in the Quincy Adam Transit Overlay District that the city prepared, um, really encouraging the, the reuse of some of these sites uh, from multifamily housing. Uh, David and Cindy have owned this property for a little bit of time, and they've really worked um, not only with the existing properties, but it, and, and plans to try to redevelop the site to make it really even a better use and create some additional housing units. Right now, the sites include, uh, and they're identified as 62 and 66 Albertina. However, the sites go from Albertina to Branch, all the way, all the way through um, uh, the site. Um, and so they have frontage both on Albertina and on Branch. Presently, there are two single family houses that are constructed on 62 and 66 Albertina Street. Um, and and the, re the rear of the property, which fronts on Branch Street, is essentially uh, utilized right now as a large barn or garage type structure, as you can see at the end at the end of uh, Branch Street, and then there's a pool that services the, one of the of the other single family house. But this is large; it's a large site for two single family houses at 18,000 uh, square feet. And the residence B zoning district allows for uh, multi-family use, or allows for this type of. Um, Two family style use. The proposal that's before you tonight, and by the way, I'm joined tonight by both David and Cindy, but I'm also joined by uh, David Free, Freed of uh, Chu and Associates. David did the architectural design that you can see here with the renderings that are on this first page. David will share those architectural plans in a moment. And I'm also joined by Chi Man of Hardy Man Design. And she also did, as he did the last proposal, all the engineering uh, and stormwater management for the site. The proposal that's before you tonight is essentially to remove the two existing single family houses and construct two new duplex houses on Albertina Street in the place of the existing single families and then two new um, duplex style buildings on Branch Street that will front on Branch Street. Both the, the, in, the, the Albertina property and the Branch Street properties will work independently. And there will be green space between the buildings. There will be no cut through of the roadway uh, between Albertina and Branch. And, and each of the two families um, will be served by, one, two families will be served by a, a driveway <coughs> from Albertina and two, two of the duplex style units will be served by a common driveway from Branch Street. The units, as you can see, will be three stories in height, which is allowed in the residence B zoning district. Um, and, and as I said, they'll share a driveway between the two homes. Uh, there will be parking under each duplex uh, building for four vehicles. So there will be a total of 18 parking spaces, um, um, yeah, 18 parking spaces uh, provided on the site, uh, 16 parking spaces actually provided on the site. Uh, so two per unit. Um, there will be standard living area on the second and third floor, as David will, will talk about in more detail. And as you can see, there will be green space created both on the sides of the property, in the frontage of each of the property. And as you can't see on this particular plan, but you will see on the site plan, there will be park, there will be green space between the duplexes, both on Branch and Albertina. There'll be no, as I said, no cut through between those. So there'll be a, an addition of uh, of green space added to the site that will work uh, to uh, alleviate the, the drainage. 
Uh, we had the fortunate opportunity to have a neighborhood meeting with Councilor Devine, um, and uh, we met about, I think, about four or five neighbors uh, that came to the meeting. I think about four neighbors. Um, they expressed, um, you know, or asked questions about the proposal, and I think in the end, and I'm not sure if they're here tonight, they were, in the end, they were quite pleased with the, the style of the development that was being proposed here, and that there was no cut through between the streets, that that would add to traffic um, uh, congestion in the neighborhood. They were pleased to see also that there was gonna be two cars, two parking spaces per unit as well, and, um, and that there will be common driveways to add for um, additional parking for visitors that, that came to visit the homes. Uh, but if they're here, they can certainly speak for themselves. We think this really fits well in the neighborhood. If you look at the entire neighborhood in context, you'll see houses that are very similar in style. Um, and uh, you know, pitch, pitch roofs, two and a half story homes, um, some, some three in some cases, uh, and certainly with this style of uh, living. Um, the, David and Cindy both felt that this was a better way to redevelop the site rather than doing a multifamily style development on the 18,000 square foot lot, uh, you know, uh, with a, with a, um, a large, you know, uh, three story building in <coughs> one structure. They thought it would be better to utilize it in this fashion. And this allows for, for new ownership in the neighborhood. These, these buildings or units will be sold, so the duplexes will be sold as two separate condominium units. So there'll be a nice um, uh, opportunity for new home ownership within the community. So uh, enough from me. I'd like to turn this over now to you have uh, David's stuff. So why don't we have David uh, share the architectural plan? Great. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is David Fried. I'm an architect at Chewing Company at One Billings Road in uh, Quincy. Oh, next slide, please. As Ed mentioned, um, our site is shown in red there, the boundary, and you can see that um, Albertina, the house's front on Albertina, and on the back side, Branch Street actually ends at the right side of our site, and it's, it's unimproved from that point on. Next slide, please. Here's a close-up view. You can see how the, the, the spacing of the houses and the proximity of, of the houses to uh, the side lot lines is fairly consistent along Albertina. Next slide, please. Here are just a few images of the street. Um, a lot of the houses seem to have uh, one-story projections, either as enclosed porches or porches, and that's something that we've incorporated into the design of the, the project. Next slide, please. Uh, the image on the right is the back side of um, our parcel, the unapproved area, uh, is seen from Branch Street. Next slide. And then this is taken from the um, Quincy Zoning Viewer. And uh, here is an existing uh, plot plan. You can see the two houses running out the on the left, the swimming pool on the back. Next slide, please. <coughs> Uh, these are our zoning summaries. We have um, some violations for FAR, lot area, uh, front setback, the side setback, and the rear, as well as um, frontage. Our, um, our front setback aligns with the other houses, which are uh, around eight feet, and our side setbacks match the other houses as well, though we're still incurring a, a, a violation because of the, uh, the zoning district itself. Next slide, please. So this is uh, our site plan, and uh, each pair of houses shares a driveway and a drive court. Uh, each unit has its own entrance from either Albertina or uh, Branch Street. And the setbacks, uh, in general, are all, all 10 feet, 14 feet for 59 Branch, and then Albert 66 is um, a little over eight feet for a side setback. Next slide, please. Uh, these are images of the um, proposal as seen from both Albertina and, um, I'm sorry, this is our front elevation of Albertina Street at the top and the rear elevation of Albertina at the bottom. There's a, a about a 10 to 12 foot cross slope changing grade across the, um, 
the, the site itself. So our houses step down along with the grade. Uh, this is sort of a, a section cut through um, both the, either the side yard or the drive course so you can see the relationship of, of each house on Albertina and Branch. And then this is, um, these are rear elevations on the bottom of Branch and then the front elevations uh, of, of the proposal. Uh, we wanted to do something a bit more uh, contemporary but use the same materials that um, uh, are typical with residential construction like lap siding, panels, um, you know, typical details like rake, board, uh, rake boards and, and corner boards and such. We have some um, small pop-outs to give the, the building some um, uh, three-dimensional character and some light and shadow. We also have a cutout on the second floor uh, for each unit so that there is um, some outdoor space on the living floor for all the units. Next slide, please. Again, another uh, section between the two streets. Um, these are close-up views. You can go forward, Joe, please. Uh, here's a typical unit plan. Uh, unit one um, has a small office, a bathroom, and a coat closet on the first floor with the entry. And the uh, garage can be accessed also <coughs> from the entry or um, the, the, uh, the owner can access the, the unit from directly from the garage. Uh, unit two um, is set back, has a porch, and its entrance is set back a little bit further. Again, it has a small office in the back with a bathroom and an entry hall and a two-car garage. Next slide, please. Our living area is, is intended to be open plan uh, with a kitchen, dining, living area. We have uh, a laundry room on that floor as well as a half bath. And we have a small, modest um, uh, outdoor space for each unit in the corners. Next slide, please. Uh, the third floor has three bedrooms, one of which is a primary ensuite. And um, next slide. Next slide, please. Oh, I guess it's outside. OK. Uh, with that, does anyone have any questions? I think we might wait to do questions at the end if there's sure. I don't know if there's additional presentation. Yeah, we have yeah. 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 Right. Thank you. And again, for the record, my name is Chi Man from Design Group. We are the site engineer working on this project. Um, as David mentioned, the site is from Brand Street, oh, actually from Appertina to Brand Street, it's dropped about 15 feet. So we work with the existing topography. Um, We work with the, the natural slope to um, step the building down from front to back. So um, the entrance from the um, uh, Albertina, we have a shared driveway and coming in into two garage per each unit. Mm -hmm. So that's um, eight parking on inside the building for the first two buildings on Albertina Street. Um, and towards the back, we see a series of retaining wall. Those are going to be stepping down, retaining wall, terrace down. So uh, we make up the grade changes from Albertina to Bend Street. Um, over on the branches street size, uh, where you see the, uh, the word bituminous concrete, like um, if you go to the north of our site, the adjacent building as the townhouses, um, townhouses style, multi-family, and the pave, the existing pavement and right at where that property line is. So we are proposing to extend the driveway, coming in into our private driveway into the, uh, to, sur to surface the two buildings on Brand Street. Um, both entrances are um, facing Brand Street. Um, the extension of the driveway will just, uh, just go to the proposed driveway locations um, because French Street itself right now is a paper street from the existing pavement go all the way up to Grand Colony and it has a big to park with change as well so uh, we are not proposing to go any further just enough to uh, get access to our driveway 
Uh, from that point on, it's a big slope going up to Crown Colony. It's, it's very inaccessible <coughs> in my vehicle. Um, we'll have extend. Um, there's no sidewalk on Brand Street right now, but we are going to be putting sidewalk in front of our site uh, uh, on the edge of the driveway just to surface the, the main entrance of uh, two buildings. Go to the next page, please. Um, again, um, talk about the grading of the site. It's a big uh, grade change on actually both streets coming down the hill from Crown Colony and also across the section between uh, Albertina and Brand Street. So we, we step each building um, based on the, the street photography. Um, so you, you see the series of retaining walls stepping down, terracing. Um, so the driveway meet the street grade, both driveway. Um, on the Albertina side, um, we have, you know, um, uh, underground recharge system that's going to be taking all the uh, building roof runoff, to both buildings, and also the the, the uh, driveway area that will be treated by a um, uh, storm scepter unit. It's a water quality unit. Um, the driveway slope towards the uh, the street, so we have a trunk string right in front of the driveway to catch all the runoff from the parking lot, um, and then go through a, a storm scepter for water quality treatment, and then we have on-site infiltrations. Uh, versus on the uh, Brand Street side, uh, pretty much mirror the same design, um, because of the again because of the grade changes, we have separate different units. Um, because the grade doesn't work to bring all the water to one side or the other. Um, uh, same design, we're taking all the roof runoff, uh, going into the parking area, the driveway, and uh, as well as the trunk drain at the uh, edge of the uh, driveway and go through a storm scepter for water quality treatment and then go to the infiltration system. Um, and also where we extend the driveway uh, on Brand Street, we are also proposing a trunk string that collect runoff on the new, our new driveway coming down uh, from the development. And the same design, we have go through the um, stormwater quality unit and then go into our infiltration chambers. So we have three different systems based on the topography of the site, based on like our hydrocat calculations. Um, because we don't really have any overflow uh, drainage, from city drainage on either Albertina or uh, Brand Street that we can tie into. So basically, we are treating, you know, catching all the site runoff almost 100% uh, on site infiltrations. That's going to be a huge reduction on stormwater going off our properties. And, uh, uh, sanitary, we are collecting all the four buildings and we are going to connect into the uh, uh, sanitary main on um, Albertina Street. And we are going to run underground um, electric and telecoms on from the uh, existing overhead pole into um, each of the buildings. Uh, for the size of the development, we do, do not expect any transformer that we need. It will be just a regular, almost like a residential house connections into the building. Uh, open up for any questions. Sure. Does anybody have any questions? Well, I do. Uh, yep. This is a great opportunity to do something nice there, too. Um, I'm wondering about Branch Street. Did you say that Branch Street's going to end at the property, like right now where the pool is in the back? Does well, the existing... I know it continues up to us. Yeah, existing pavement. Correct. There. Correct. So Correct. we're yep. extending the driveway just to so <clears throat> get to our, our okay. side driveway. Okay, all right. So everything, your work is going to stop at that middle, middle, middle driveway. Yes. And because I that is quite... The that slope, is on. That's quite a slope. And, and it also pitches <clears throat> away from the property, too. So you're going to have to grade that down quite a bit, do you think? Uh, we don't really have to grade that down, because from um, this point on, it's not the grade change about three feet. Okay. As we go up towards Crown Corner, you can see the coin for us. Yeah, really rapid sure can. Up. And also, I think that's one of the concerns the neighborhood had at the meeting, was they, they, they worry about 
friendship being in the future that can extend up to um, Korea Loop to Albertina. Um, they don't want the traffic cutting through and you know, with the existing book. That would be nice for pedestrian traffic. I mean, it's, it's, you know, there's a lot of, and one last question, um, where you transition from your driveway to the remaining slope going up, is there going to be any sort of a demarcation or a retaining wall, anything of that nature? Is it just going to go from street grade? Just from street grade, grade graduate into right. the existing, um, okay. basically it's more of, almost like a uh, grass slope going up yeah. right now. All right. Yes. Um, is this going to be stick built, or are you guys considering modular, or how are we going to do this? Stick, stick, stick. stick built. Thank you. Yeah. It looks. Uh, it looks like you may be even setting the house back just a little from where the existing White House is from Albertine. Maybe I am trying to look at the picture here. It looks like because you're going back to eight, ten feet. It says on the uh, eight foot. Uh, five, but um, and definitely going to clean up the backside on the Branch Street. We have that four car garage that that's looking like it could need, need a little haircut. Uh, so it does it does uh, does definitely going to make it look better. So um, I think this fit we very well. Ample that. amount of green space, but I, I'm just correct. When you were talking about the drainage, did you say there's no drainage pipes down there for it's the no city? There's no drain pipe on the street itself because the topography of the street just run down so they don't they don't have catch basing on there the line. Sure, they, right? It's they are catch basing further down the street but you. it's nothing for us to tie into. But you have sewer lines down there? Sewer lines and down water there. lines in. Yes. So there's sewer line on, on Brand Street but that's like two hundred feet up, up the street. <laughs> so we are taking our sewer on uh, connect into the uh, Albertina side. I mean, the house on Albertina size look, looks nice, but I think when you put them all together, I think, you know, I think it's going to look nice. Yeah. I think it's going to clean the area up a little bit. Yeah, we try to keep on the same neighborhood contacts, you know, with the design. No, no more questions. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. Just a question. So no on-street guest parking. I mean, uh, no on-site guest parking. No on-site guest parking. We have two parking per unit. Okay. Which is um, uh, a lot more than what the neighborhood has. Okay. I think and right now the the existing house only yeah. has a small single driveway that park like one car. Yeah, but but it doesn't. It's not a duplex, right? It's a yeah. single family dwelling. Mm -hmm. So this is concentrating a lot more units on, you know, you're going from two units on a site to eight units. Yeah. So you're introducing kind of those guest spaces to the street, um, and then no proposed parking along that that back portion of Branch Ave. I understand it's right of way. I just. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That was the only question that I had. I have one yes. more question too. So this is going to take between nine to twelve months. Is what you were figuring construction? Is there any is there any type of construction management parking plan for the workers that are going to be building this during the nine to twelve months? Like where where are they going to park? Um, she mentioned you actually had an outline of where you know, where we would fence and where we would construct. Right? They'd just be on site. On site, yeah, yeah, we'll be on site. You know, when when we start with the site clearing, okay. you know, actually, I think it's going to be one building at a time. One building, we'll build, you know, and one or two buildings. Concentration can also be for parking on the Branch Street side, where it dead ends, and there's very there's nothing no, now. No activity at all. Take, yeah. take the garage down first. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Uh, yes. It's for sale or for rent? Uh, I believe for sale. Yeah. Just a condo. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? No? All right, let's see if there's any public comment. Um, is anybody here wishing to speak on this application? Councillor Devine? And uh, while he makes his way up, I'll just uh, remind everybody there are sign-in sheets um, along the wall, over there in the windowsill, in case anybody wants to sign their name for or against. Councillor Devine. Hello, uh, James Devine, 117 Cross Street. Uh, we had a uh, community meeting. Several families came had uh, concerns when it started. When they left, they were all basically answered. Uh, some of it was the runoff, all that kind of stuff. But um, the uh, constituents that showed up, they were actually pleased with the project the way it is now. I think before it was um, sent out differently last year. Uh, but the, uh, they all seemed very um, very happy with it at the end of the community meeting. So, mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Counselor. Thank you for coming. Anyone else wishing to speak on this application? Can I ask a question? 
Yeah, of course. Um, John Road of Frail 62 Grandwall Road. Um, it looks like the footprints of the building are all the same, is approximately, is that correct? Yes. Do you know, could you give me a um, width length number? Because they look like rectangles. So what is the um, length, what is the width, like a bad eyesight? Thirty by seventy-one. About yeah. Don't quote me. Thirty by seventy-one, seventy-two. Thirty by seventy-one. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm taking CPA courses now, so I'm just doing math <laughs> in my head. Um, and so there's three full stories. So we're talking approximately a little more than six thousand square foot per unit. I mean, it's my math correct? Right. No. no. About twenty-seven hundred square feet. What did you say the first floor was again? Uh, the, the footprint. Did you just say 30 by 70? Yeah, they do crosses. Well, that's, oh, okay, you gave me the dupe of the, the, yeah. okay. See, I would have got that answer wrong on the test. I got to divide by two, so they're more like <laughs> 3,000, okay. Um, but still, though, um, you know, when I was looking, when you first put that picture of the map up above, it did look right, you know what I'm saying? But then in my head, I'm thinking like, um, across from, um, I'm not even sure, does Sweeney own that other funeral thing down by Ramondi, or is that Cohane's? Uh, different. But, but you know the ones where you approved? relation. I, I'm, I'm thinking of those four units that you approved that mm -hmm. are all right next to each other. It looked better on paper up there than it did when it's done now. So like when I'm looking at that right now, I would guess they all have front doors on the left, on the, on two have front doors on Branch Street and two have front doors on Albertina. Yeah. So they both have back doors <clears throat> at each other. So my, you know, my kind of issue there is the distance between one back door to the other back door. Let's say if the people are behind their house um, and they're barbecuing, you know what I mean? Is there, could one person who's barbecuing in one house be potentially too close to the other house? You know, like, you know, I just, you know, I just personally myself, I wouldn't want to live there. I actually, um, I think it's an interesting way to design things. I've seen, I'm thinking of Atlantic Street up in North Quincy. We did another thing like this where we squeeze like four together. I do, I do appreciate that they did come here and, oh no, there's eight units, so they couldn't waive site plan review on this one. But if, um, so that was only two units back to back. So in theory, I'm not sure if I've seen that. I mean, you know, Mrs. Stevens, you would know, whatever. But it's kind of like two different parcels, and they're doing the same thing on two different parcels right next to each other. So you could argue that. Is it two different parcels? It's, it's one parcel. It's one parcel? Well, there's, there's 62 and 66. There's two parcels. But, okay. but it, on each. So like, will it be so like the one? Parcels, the parcels run, as we said before, 66, 62. Runs front to back, runs front from Al all the way to. And, and you said before it's going to be a condo. They're going to be kind of, each unit is going to be a condominium. Right? So will so each one, it will each one be an individual condo administration, or will there be one master condo thing? Will there be like eight people living in the same condo thing, or will there be? Probably one association with, with eight companies. I just think I just think like I said. I mean, my main thing is the new people that move to Quincy. You know, we we got to make sure that they move to places that were planned correctly. You know what I'm saying? So like, I I know we need the new growth. I actually I, I I you know like I said, looking up top, I actually feel bad for how dense they developed this area in the first place. You know what I mean? So some places are really dense. So to use the you know, excuse of saying that, hey, we have a really dense area, um, you know, so we can be dense here. You could kind of look at the place, some of these places that are really dense, um, it'd be nice to stay less dense with something. Like, you know, like if, if you know, you built something really small there, the neighbors would probably shovel your driveway and cut your grass and be really cool to you. But anyway, like I said, this is, um, Attorney Fleming always has good projects and this at least will get done right once it's done. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak on this project? No. Okay. Did, did we get any correspondence? Um, no. Unless I'm missing it? No. Okay. I don't believe so, no. All right. Uh, it's sort of similar to the last case. This is an open. Um, the application's been submitted to the departments for comment, and uh, we do have independent peer review working on this one as well. Um, I think with uh, some of the roadway and the drainage work, 
I may need a little extra time to work through. The recommendation would be would kick, uh, uh, recommend we continue this two months to the March 20th meeting. Okay. Motion to move this to the March meeting. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck with that. So just before we start, this is a weird thing to ever tell us this because it's always on it. It's the only thing in the world 21. So we can all have it together. Yeah. But then we have those two. So the regulations contest. So don't think we gotta do it twice. So we're just gonna open it all. Yeah, you'd have to just read it once. We're not opening two different cases. However, we do need to issue two separate kind of to both the students. Thank you. If you want to slide directly over there, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thank 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 Okay, so while everybody's getting settled in, we'll, we'll go ahead and um, read the public hearing notice. Chapter 121A, 37R and 86 Parking Way, Planning Board Case Number 2021-COC01. This public hearing shall be conducted to review the application of FRP Quincy Development, LLC, 350 Granite Street, Suite 2205, Braintree, Mass, for approval under Chapter 121A of the development of a parcel with an address of 37R and 86 Parking Way, Quincy, Massachusetts, and for consent to the formation of an entity under Chapter 121A to undertake such project and for the extension of the period of the exemption of the project from local taxation under Chapter 121A. The project consists of a four-story medical office building containing approximately 110,000 square feet. The medical office building will be constructed for a healthcare tenant to provide healthcare services to residents of Quincy and the surrounding towns. Um, the four-story building will include primary care, urgent care, radiology, orthopedics, obstetrics and gynecology, cardiology, and cancer infusion, amongst other uses. Parking for the medical office building will be located in an adjacent parking garage. There is also retail planned in two separate buildings adjacent to the parking garage. The site of the project is shown as on assessor's map 1148.94 and 1148.58 and 58A. The applicant also requests the planning board to modify the certificate of consistency previously issued for the project, case number 2021-COC1, 20, to be made consistent with the project and its construction schedule as described in the foregoing application. Good evening, Good evening. Madam Chair, <clears throat> members of the board. I'm attorney Dave Mahoney, and I represent Fox Hour. With me tonight is Mr. Josh Kleinman, the director of design and construction at Fox, Fox Rock and Adam Weisenberg, who is a partner at Sullivan and Worcester and an expert in 121A if there are any questions come up. Uh, in 2019, the City Council approved an LDA and a tax structure for the property of 37-hour parking way and 86 parking way. In February of 2022, the board approved a COC in the case number that was referenced before. And that project has since been modified and is before the board tonight for uh, modification. This past fall, you may have read in the newspaper that Fox Rock signed a lease with Beth Israel uh, Deaconess Medical Center to put an office, medical office building here. This is certainly great news for the city of Quincy to have a medical provider uh, back in the city of Quincy. So what we'd like to do tonight is Josh Kleiman will go through the, the uh, proposal uh, and then at the end we'll leave up a slide that has some uh, items that we're requesting the board to do tonight. Josh Kleiman. Hi, good evening. My name is Josh Kleinman uh, with Fox Rock Properties, representing the applicant. Um, it's a pleasure to be here tonight, and um, it's a pleasure to present this project as we, um, as Dave has mentioned, are bringing Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center to Quincy Center to build them a new ambulatory service center. 
So the project site is located in Quincy Center at 37R96 Parking Way. It is bound by Granite Street to the north, Bergen Parkway to the mm. west, General McConville Way to the east, and General Dunford Drive to the south. Um, there are four buildings associated with the project, which I'll get into uh, in a minute. Um, directly south of our project site in the blue dash outline, uh, Fox Rock <coughs> previously transferred a portion of land to allow the city to build the General's Bridge on, along General Dunford Drive back in 2020 and 21. And more recently, we transferred a piece of property at no cost to the city to allow, to facilitate the city to build a new parking garage south of the bridge that will allow for the new development of the proposed specialty retail grocer and apartments above that project. Um, starting from the south, along General Dunford Drive is the proposed uh, new medical office building. It's a four-story building, roughly 110,000 square feet. Um, directly to the north is a drop-off area for patients. And uh, just north of that, outlined in yellow, is a six-tier parking garage that will house 515 parking spaces and will serve the users of the project. To the east of the parking garage is the Retail One space, which is a two-story space, roughly 9,000 square feet, with outdoor space and as well as indoor dining um, as a proposed restaurant use in the future. And to the north is the Retail Two space, which is roughly an 18,000 square foot, two-story building um, that will be used for general retail. And directly north of that, across from the rear drive, is a park that will provide um, additional green space um, to the project, as well as outdoor seating, planting areas, and, and um, other type of passive entertainment areas. Um, and along the rear of the site, you can see a access drive that provides uh, exiting from the garage, as well as access to a loading area at the rear of the project. Um, just to be clear, because I know there's been some questions um, outside of the hearing, the purpose of the 121A um, agreement is solely for the medical office building. All of the other buildings will be subject to ad valorem market rate taxes, um, and only the medical office building will receive the tax exemption. The medical office building, um, the program will be urgent care, primary care, uh, a full suite of radiology services on the first floor, cardiology, OBGYN, cancer care, orthopedics, lab services, pharmacy, as well as other specialty services that, that will be located in the building. Um, uh, located at the east on the uh, southern portion, you can see the uh, ingress arrow um, into the project, which provides access through the garage. Once you enter the garage, you have the ability to make a left turn to the drop-off loop, which has ample, park, uh, ample space for um, dropping off patients that um, will provide direct access to the medical office building. Um, when you're in the garage, you also have the ability to go right, which is, allows you to traverse up through the pay stations um, and up through the parking structure. Um, coming down out of the garage, you have the ability to pick up patients as you exit the building or exit through the rear of the site. Um, and there's also a uh, one-story basement to provide additional parking for the project. Um, back in 2021, new utilities were installed in General McConville Way. We'll be tying into those, into those utilities. Uh, at the rear of the site along the MBTA retaining wall, there's an existing 20-inch water main. We'll be tying into that and looping that throughout the site. That'll tie um, through uh, into McConville Way at both the north end of the site as well as the south end of the site. Um, for stormwater, there will be uh, an infiltration chamber that's placed in the drop-off area to um, allow for on-site recharge. And there's also an inf a small inf infiltration chamber in the park at the north end of the site. Um, we're also maintaining the existing uh, storm drainage structures that run from the MBTA pump station at the northwest corner of the site, as well as the city's drainage system that runs from Granite Street to McConville Way. Um, new power will be brought into the site, uh, working with National Grid. There'll be a switch gear that is in between the medical office building and the garage. Um, that will service this project as well as other projects in the area. Um, and then the medical office building will be served by two transformers and the garage and the retail space will be served by two additional transformers. Um, and then obviously there'll be new um, sanitary lines run throughout the project that tie back into the Way. For the landscape plan, we are looking to maintain the design um, that was installed in 2021 along General McConville Way, which is a series of street trees, brick accent paving, uh, 
concrete paving as well as benches. We are also planning for additional outdoor space in front of Retail One, uh, which is uh, page south or east of the garage. And then we have the additional planting and open space area um, across the drive to the north of the project site. Um, we're looking to denote the uh, drop-off area with decorative paving as well as other accents um, to bring people into the project and really make it a nice space for not only um, people who will be visiting the site, for other people just passing through. The buildings are all set back five feet off the property line, so in addition to the sidewalk that is currently placed in place, there will be an additional five feet of width that will allow pedestrians to walk through and not feel tight up against the buildings. For the medical office building, the uh, proposal is for a brick facade uh, with similar details to some of the other projects we're building in Quincy, such as Center and Stone and National Park. Um, there will be punch windows with metal panels above and below it, a uh, soldier course detailing at the corners of the building, and then there is a covered walkway that brings you from a convo way uh, back deeper into the site to the entry of the building. From the southeast corner, you can see the, there's a curved facade that um, was designed to complement General Gunford Drive and the curved bridge that traverses from McConville Way to Bergen Parkway. It's a metal panel facade that carries above the brick facade. Uh, the reason for the extension is to screen the mechanical, uh, mechanical equipment that is um, on the rooftop area so that the mechanical equipment won't be visible from the ground from either people driving by or uh, pedestrians at the ground level. For the Retail One space that is east of the garage, it's a two-story space with outdoor seating at both um, a patio level as well as a roof deck. Um, and we're proposing brick materials and metal accents to complement the medical office building and other buildings in the area. And to the north, we have our two-story retail building really looking to activate the street with a lot of glass and, and light um, to allow kind of the uses that are on the inside um, trickle out to the exterior. You can see the street trees as well as the ample sidewalks and then across the, uh, across the street to the right off the page is the new <coughs> park area that's proposed. Um, so for the project benefits, the medical office building to be located at a major gateway to the city's downtown will be a signature building and use and will serve as a commercial anchor for the city's redevelopment efforts. The building will be occupied by the first class healthcare provider Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. The northern end of the site will feature a landscape open space area to be maintained by Fox Rock, the redeveloper. And Fox Rock has contributed at no cost to the city two key parcels of land, one required for the General's Bridge and another required for the new city garage to be located south of the General's Bridge. <clears throat> and then as Dave mentioned, um, as part of the 120A approval and the certificate of consistency approval, we have um, requests from the planning board. Uh, the first one being to approve the design of the project and report its approval to the mayor. Approve Parkingway CM Limited Partnership as a limited dividend entity to own the property. Extend the term of the 6A contract for 25 years, making the term of the section 6A contract 40 years. And for the COC process, modify the existing COC to incorporate the plans for the approved design and extend the expiration date of the existing COC for two years. Thank you. Thank you. Your presentation. Yeah, Let me see if anybody has any questions. Any questions over here? No? I have a question. Sure. Yeah. On the retail component, do you have anybody interested or to talk to anybody in regards to the? Um, we haven't started marketing it, it yet. Um, we still have state approvals to go through for the medical office building, and so once we get further along, then we'll start to market it and, and, and draw interest. Um, we have we know there are restaurateurs that are in the Quincy area that we're speaking to at other locations. Um, that would slot in really nicely at the site. Now, the restaurant, if there were, let's just say there were a restaurant towards it, yeah. they fall under the 121, so they get taxed? No, 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 that's just the market. They have taxes. to pay the taxes. Correct. Yes. yes. Gotcha. Thank you. Just yes. one question. Um, it's a nice looking project. Thank you. I want to say that. Um, a little smaller than the last one, but that's okay. <laughs> um, and now, are you going to develop the whole site all at once? So uh, right now, the short answer is yes, it'll be phased. Um, the plan right now is to, do, is to construct the garage first. Um, from there, we'll, we'll construct the medical office building followed by the retail spaces. And uh, just one question, are they gonna have an ER room in this 
facility? I beg your pardon? An, 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 is it going to be an emergency room? No, it's urgent care. Urgent um, care? Yeah, the, the site won't, be, will not be licensed. Hours, no, no, it'll have extended hours, but it'll not be 24 hours. It's an outpatient facility, so there'll be no overnight stays. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. On, on the line of uh, how, how you're phasing this in, so what is your approximate start date? An end date for the project for the whole thing. What are you guys thinking? Sure, it's going to take one, two, three years. What is? What are you thinking? Yep. So um, we'd like to start the garage construction in the fall, um, if everything aligns. Um, from there, we'd move into the medical office building um, in early Q2 of 2025. That'd be about a 22-month build, and then as we're coming out of the ground with that, we'd come out of the ground with the retail, which would have much shorter durations. So, 24 in the fall. Yep. 25, 26, 27. Yeah. So we're done by 28. Yeah. The, the goal would be done be, be done before 28. Yes. Thank you. This is a this is good looking. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Okay. No. Okay. Let's see if the public has any comment. Sure. Is there anybody from the public? Yes. And while you make your way up, I'll just remind folks in the audience, there are sign-in sheets um, along the windowsill. You can sign your name and you can say yay or nay um, if you don't want to come up and speak. Hi. Hi. I'm Mary Jo Garza. Um, I live at 18 Cliveden Street and I'm in a butter. I do want to thank the board for a notice for this meeting, but when um, the October 11th meeting was held, we did not receive a notice and we're even close for a butters. So, that wasn't a um, public hearing. It was that wasn't a public hearing. I it was listed. It was anyway. A, it was yeah. Public meeting. It was a preliminary meeting in yeah. front of the board, not an advertised public oh, okay. hearing. Oh yes. Yep. All right, because we received three notices for this one. But, mm -hmm. um, and then I just want to clarify. So, because the forty, the, the extension for forty years is for the medical part. The other part of the building does that have the fifteen year exemption because it's in a blighted area for taxes the, the, the medical office building no the other part of it the retail no because it was a little unclear in the article that was in the newspaper because it's a blighted area that there was an automatic 15-year extension for not paying taxes not automatic. The, the, the blighted reference um, is probably due to the fact that the city has adopted an urban renewal plan right. uh, for about 15 years. So we have to go through a series of surveys of the area and make findings that uh, but for uh, the city's involvement, this area wouldn't redevelop on its own. So that's where blighted or, or decadent right. comes from. And as uh, we redevelop the sites, uh, there's another tool which is uh, a companion to the urban renewal, which is the Chapter 121A. Uh, and that's the tool being utilized uh, to uh, uh, support the medical office only piece. That comes with an automatic 15 years. Wow. What's part of uh, being asked of the board tonight is, um, and they have the powers, which is to extend it, uh, to provide it an additional 25 years to make the overall term 40. Okay, all right. So I'm not against the project. Um, having lived there for six years, this is about the eighth project, <laughs> six or so. Um, and, but I am against the 40 year, ex the, the extension to 40 years because that is an awfully long time. And I think that all of our, if we're talking about people who, we, we got no exemptions for, buying in that neighborhood six years ago when it was blighted, truly blighted. Um, and I don't think that um, the developer should be able to get an extension either. That's my comment. Thank you. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Is there anyone else um, wishing to speak on this application? Going once? I'm going to have to. Okay. I'll be good. Okay. Yeah, just to the, the project and the application that's before us. Um, John Rotterfeld, 62 Graham Wall Road. Um, the one, uh, just questions. Um, the parking lot, is that part of the 121A or is that taxable? That's not part of the 121A. Okay, so we'll collect money on the parking lot, taxes on the parking lot, and we'll collect it's taxes. It's not part of the 121A. Okay. Okay, 
And um, my only other thing, I, I really think that we do have a need for um, medical. My, my parents are both in their 80s, and they constantly are going into the Mass General, they're going into Boston, and you know, my dad it seems like every other day it's like you're going into the Boston again. So it would be beautiful. We live on Grenwell Road. It would take absolutely no time to get there. So I'm excited to get some really good medical services there. And that's why they do deserve the 121A. I mean, I'm not against that. And, you know, I have, this is the theory I have because I like to always add a little bit of humor to everything. But if they give them the 40, I just want Fox Rock to be honorable people because, you know, uh, Mr. Blandino does a great job writing his articles in the ledger. And one of the other articles I read um, was about the fat cat um, might have to leave. Everyone in Quincy loves the fat cat. I would love that if the city gives Fox Rock this goodwill, they give the fat cat really good will give them a really good lease so we can let the fat cat stay here and if the fat cat doesn't want to get that deal let a couple other places because the reality is the whole thing about having the 121 is to entice rent is to entice um medical stuff or things we need but we want to keep good businesses in the city C -C katie's did not survive and they're a great business you know what i mean so it's very tough one of the things is rents I know if there was um, a thing on the Quincy website for an RFP to get someone cheap rent, there'd be a whole bunch of people like looking for it. But Fox Rock can just pass that generosity off to another tenant so we can have a really good restaurant here. The town's in. You know, we, we need good restaurants in Quincy Center, and they need to pay good rent. The people who run those restaurants deserve to earn decent wages, and the only they can't be giving all their money to the landlords. And I don't feel bad for a landlord when we know that they've saved money here. So why not, you know, be generous there? So um, I'm, I'm for this project. I think this is one of the keys to the downtown to get it finished. I'd like to see this get finished by the time I'm 65. I'm 54. I give you 11 more years. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Madam Chair, will we have this one thing? Yes. Um, I, Josh, I'm sorry um, when you're at the podium. I just, you don't have to get up. I just, when choosing contractors, please uh, be considerate and choose uh, a contractor that can hire men and women for the city of Quincy. Um, it's a big project. It's a signatory. Uh, it's a project that's going to be a big uh, draw. And um, please be considerate so the men and women of Quincy can work on this project. Thank you. All right. Is there any other public comment on this? Okay. We did receive correspondence, which I'll read um, quickly from Greg. I should uh, go over how to pronounce names in advance of the meetings. Bariza, and, and I apologize if that's incorrect. I am ready to oppose um, extending 25 years of tax relief to Fox Rock Properties for the medical office building part of the Switchpoint Quincy project. I am retired. My income is fixed. This year, my own taxes went up nearly 25% over last year. Granting Fox Rock's request will make them rise further in the future because the taxpayers will have to pay for the services they use. If this is granted, the students who graduated from Quincy's high schools last summer will be paying Fox Rock's bill for this until most are near retirement age. It also seems suspicious how convenient it was for the request to be made public after the last election ceremonies concluded and Fox Rock established revenue stream from their hundreds of new apartments on Hospital Hill. Fox Rock has large financial resources to draw from either directly or through its parent companies. If they cannot make this work, we should find a better finance developer who can. I know many of my fellow citizens would join me in requesting a quarter century pause in paying my taxes, so why is this a fair deal for normal folk? And that's Gregory Riza, 18 Cliveton Street. Rob. Okay, that's yeah. it. Um, yes, uh, Madam Chair, through you. Uh, so when this request came in, uh, the department uh, uh, reached out to our uh, other departments, the city engineer's office and TPAL. Um, you know, essentially the site plan that was originally approved by this board stays the same. Uh, it's some of the, the massing and the, and the square footage uh, that has reduced. So we did not reactivate peer review. Uh, as I've explained to the board in the past with these urban renewal projects, a lot of times 
Uh, the engineers are, are in touch with our engineering team. Um, so we did get uh, some brief uh, email correspondence from the city engineer's office and TPAL. Uh, they had some minor comments. I, I think those were in your packets. Um, the planning department has also had uh, the benefit of um, the law firm uh, that is uh, under contract with the city of Quincy, Keegan Whirlin, to help review these legal documents. Essentially, these are legal documents extending from uh, the land disposition agreement. Uh, there, there still may need to be some adjustments to that agreement. So uh, the Keegan Whirlin team, and, and they are here in the audience, uh, both attorney uh, Sean Nehill and Brian Golden, have prepared a memo for this board. Uh, we've been working with them closely with the Fox Rock team uh, to bring this application in front of uh, this board. And uh, I think it, it may be beneficial to get just a brief uh, summary of that uh, deliberation from that team. Um, and uh, there is uh, some conditions, if the board so chooses to move on, uh, that uh, they've worked with the department to help uh, craft that. So uh, what we have is essentially, uh, and the regulations allow it, we have one case that's open, but uh, the board would need to make two separate sort of decisions. One, to update the site plans, the so-called certificate of consistency. Uh, and then the, the second would to be uh, to put in place the series of measures to put uh, the 121A uh, tax agreement into place, which would be a report back to uh, the mayor uh, at, at this time. Um, but uh, if we could recognize attorney Brian Golden, um, that'd be great. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chair, and uh, through you to the members. Again, my name is Brian Golden. I'm with the law firm of Keegan Whirlin. I'm here with my uh, colleague, uh, Sean Neehill, we're based in downtown Boston, but doing an awful lot of work here in Quincy um, over the past year, particularly with regard to development issues in, um, in uh, Quincy Center. Uh, so uh, what we've uh, presented tonight is uh, hopefully a fairly succinct document that outlines exactly what's being um, sought tonight. Uh, as, as Deputy Director Stevens uh, mentioned, there's, there's still work to be done. There'll be uh, further iterations of some of the um, procedural and substantive issues that, that need further attention as time goes by. But what was key uh, to get to you tonight was um, a, um, a presentation and a narrative that deals with a couple of fundamental things. One, as, as you've discussed, is the extension of um, uh, the 121A, 6A, uh, tax agreement, uh, extending it uh, for uh, 25 years, bringing it up to a total of 40. Uh, the other uh, matter, as has been referenced um, a few times this evening, is uh, the original uh, uh, development program called for 150,000 square foot minimum uh, facility. That number is now a minimum of 100. Uh, thousand square feet that is based on the needs of the um, uh, the tenant uh, that has agreed to occupy the facility so uh, there was a need to come back to the planning board because uh, both of these very specific items were uh, contemplated in in prior documents in the, the land disposition agreement um, for instance called out very specifically uh, the 150,000 square foot size. So that necessitated a return because the tax deal was based on the size of the project. Project size has changed. So um, to ensure that the tax um, deal uh, contemplated now uh, a, an altered um, um, square footage uh, that has to be rerouted back uh, through the planning board, uh, there will be a further uh, city council action on this as well. Uh, so there are some very basic items that are discussed in that document and have been discussed here uh, before you this evening. There'll be uh, some further attention to some of the details that need to be addressed uh, before um, we're entirely complete with the process. But I'm happy to entertain any questions um, that you might have. And I, and I would just add some of the conditions we worked on, you know, sort of compels that process to occur. Yes. You know, so we wanted to make sure this board was comfortable moving forward. 
um, and that we had the proper conditions uh, to, to manage you know, the, the follow-on uh, requirements. And you'll see that laid out in the document, what still has to be addressed. Um, and we anticipate um, that these further conditions will be addressed in, in, in the coming months. So I have a question. Yes, sir. First of all, I'm all for this because I'm only a crane operator, but I don't understand Latin sometimes, But so you gotta help me out a little bit here. So it says not to be assessed typical ad valorem real estate taxes. So does that mean in lieu of taxes, that Fox Rock and the city would then come to an understanding. So in lieu of taxes, we do uh, whatever. I don't, I don't, is that what that means? No. No, what does that mean? So ad valorem taxes are basically just the conventional property taxes that the average person, the average business pays under okay. Chapter 59 of state law. Yeah. So ad valorem just means based on value. So we all pay property taxes based on the based value on of our land. property. So, so this building isn't going to be paying ad valorem property taxes, which are conventional property taxes. To your question, does it mean they'll be paying something else? Well, sometimes when there are these tax deals, there may be a pilot payment negotiated, which is a payment of, in lieu of taxes, not chapter 59 taxes based on value as is normal in state law, but maybe the municipality and the developer, the owner, come up with something different. Some tax relief, but you might pay something lesser, for instance, I think to your point. In this instance, uh, the understanding is that uh, the tenant, Beth Israel, which is providing an important uh, medical service, healthcare um, facility with healthcare services that have been, you know, uh, called for uh, over and over. I believe there's a strong sentiment in this city oh, I, that I a significant that. metal facility. I'm all for that. Yep, so, so that's why this is not going to be a taxed facility for those 40 years, for the healthcare uses. Again, just for the healthcare uses. But it, there, is, there is not a substitute or alternate payment being contemplated. Okay, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm all not very smart about this, so. So this is kind of like what Menino had asked for with Harvard University, not Harvard, but with Boston College, uh, Boston University. Every he university, everyone. Yeah. yeah. And I think the response from the university was, well, you want us to leave? We're not gonna pay anything. Well, uh, you pray am, am I correct in yeah. this, like, this, am I in the right circle here? So there's 30 colleges and universities in the city of Boston yeah. within the political boundaries. Each one of them had a different attitude. Some, to your point, yeah. were absolutely not. We're not paying a payment in lieu of taxes. We're a tax exempt entity. We're not paying. That was some. Okay. Others probably did a pretty healthy job of coming up with an alternate payment. Um, and then there was a whole bunch in the middle. We'll give you something. We're not going to give you everything you want. I think it's safe to say not, not one single one of them is paying anything close to the chapter 59 what they would have been paying if they were a taxable entity. But those 30 colleges and universities, uh, they either pay no uh, payment in lieu of taxes or they pay something. I understand that. No one pays the full amount. I, I understand that. Thank you. No, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay. No. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, oh, there might be another public comment. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Michael Miller, 18 Clydeden Street. What I wanted to ask was, um, for the tax purposes, what about the parking garage? Because for the retail, it makes sense. You would have who's who's responsible for the uh, parking garage? I think didn't, didn't Rob just? I think well, he just it, answered that. It's, didn't it's not part of the tax deal, no. Right. So they, so it's, this is normal like the, the, for the retail. I guess there'll be a parking garage company that owns that or something? There, um, that's sort of one of the final sort of fixes would be, you know, public, um, you know, is, does that become public or is that a private garage? Oh. Um, so there's still uh, a little bit of work to be done on that piece. The retail would be taxed. Um, 
Yes. So, you know, one of the things we contemplated is a subdivision plan, right, of, of trying to, you know, final boundaries. But I think it, that's further down in the process where we are now. We're trying to make that pivot. Uh, we're doing it here in front of the board um, because uh, we, we'd like to get this project moving forward. Uh, there will be a council touch or two, and then there's a whole number of follow-on uh, processes that are in place. Um, so I think there was an overhead graphic, you know, Joe, that sort of, you know, depicted that one tax parcel, if you recall. Yes. And yes. That, so that tax agreement, it's for, for that area. Yeah, you can see it right there. Correct. So, you know, the garage and the retail are on the other side. Um, yes. Okay. Thank you. Oh, yep, yeah, Councillor Devine. Uh, James Devine, 117 Cross Street again. Uh, this building looks very similar to the Mass General. It's on University Ave in Westwood. Uh, a lot of my neighbors, constituents, and friends They've all been really concerned with getting a hospital back into Quincy. And I've been saying, you know, I'm like, we're going to have the next best thing, which is a large medical building that you'll be doing regular, like, I believe they're going to be doing some very good surgeries, day surgeries that you don't have to go in town to do. And uh, so this is unbelievable and very exciting for Quincy. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Any further comment? All right. So with that, um, we'll close the public hearing. Is there a motion? Motion to close the public hearing. Okay, is there a second? Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And does the department have a recommendation? Yes. And okay. um, something a little bit unique with this mm -hmm. uh, process, uh, the rules and regulations contemplates one application in front of this board. However, um, we need to make two separate recommendations for the outcome. One would be to modify the site plan of the COC, and then the second would be the uh, recommendations for the, the tax deal. And there's a few different steps there. Um, but uh, with that, uh, I'll go ahead. And I, I will start with the certificate of consistency um, decision, mainly because the 121A uh, application process would normally incorporate a development program. We're allowed to use the COC plans as that program. So I, I would like, from a sequencing point, to recommend the COC, and then we can come back to the 121A after that. Um, so after consideration of the site plans, accompanying documents, and the comments received from city staff, uh, city engineer, and TPAL, the department recommends the board approve the modification to the Certificate of Consistency Planning Board Case 2021-COC-01 subject to the approved special and general conditions of the planning board decision dated February 9th, 2022, and as filed with the city clerk on March 22nd, 2022, and to the following additional special conditions. So if that's not clear, uh, the board's or, or the department's original recommendation approved by the board contained 18, 17 conditions. So that with our recommendation, we're gonna propose two additional so I'm gonna read them as condition number 18. Um, prior to the issuance of a building permit for the proposed project, the applicant shall negotiate with the city and along with the city, execute the definitive contract documentation as the applicant and the city agree are necessary to implement the city and the applicant's respective obligations concerning parking under section 15 of the settlement and land disposition agreement between the city and FRP Quincy Development LLC dated June 18th. 2019, uh, in parentheses, as the same may be amended, supplemented, or modified, the LDA, in parentheses. Condition, uh, special condition number 19. This decision shall be subject to the Quincy City Council's authorization of an amendment to the LDA to reflect that the medical office building shall consist of at least 100,000 square feet for medical uses, which amendment shall be subject to approval of the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities to the extent determined necessary under applicable law. So that would be the department's recommendation for the modified certificate of consistency. Okay, and is there a motion? So, motion, Chair, I'll, I'll move to approve the modification to the certificate of consistency, planning board case number 2021-COC-01, subject to the original special and general conditions, and so the new conditions outlined by the planning department in its recommendation. Okay, is 
there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. So that's unanimous. <clears throat> now on the second component. Um, so the second component is dealing with the uh, Chapter 121A, Section 6A agreement. After consideration of the site plan accompanying documents and the comments received from the city staff, uh, the department recommends the board approve the 121A agreement subject to the below listed special conditions. Special condition one, um, and this will sound familiar. <laughs> Um, prior to the issuance of a building permit for the proposed project, the applicant shall negotiate with the city and along with the city execute the definitive contract documentation as the applicant and the city agree are necessary to implement uh, the city's and the applicant's respective obligations concerning parking under section 15 of the settlement and land disposition agreement between the city and FRP Quincy Development LLC dated June 18th, 2019 as may be amended, supplemented, or modified the LDA. Special condition number two, uh, this decision shall be subject to the Quincy City Council's authorization of an amendment to the LDA to reflect that the medical office building shall consist of at least 100,000 square feet for medical uses, which, um, which amendment shall be subject to the approval of the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities to the extent determined necessary under applicable law. Um, so that would conclude the department's recommendation. Okay. And on this one, we have to make certain findings. Correct. Okay. There is sort of three motions that will okay. occur. Um, and uh, Madam Chair, I will move to approve the proposed project under Mass General Law Chapter 121A and the Special Act, subject to the conditions outlined by the Planning Department in its recommendation. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. I will also move to consent to the formation of Parkingway CM Limited Partnership, an entity under sections 3 and 18C of Mass General Law, Chapter 121A, and to issue a certificate under section 6 of Mass General, Mass General Laws, Chapter 121A, and the Special Act, and to confirm that this decision shall serve as such a certificate. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. And finally? Finally, I will move to extend the period of exemption from local real estate taxes for the pr proposed project under Section 10 of Mass General Laws, Chapter 121A, by 25 years for a total of 40 years. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And that's unanimous. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. 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 And that's all we have on today. Right? Yep. Are there any business items? Well, uh, no, no business okay. items. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent.